Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for coming out today. Mr. Speaker, this is an exciting day for the technology community across America and a day that they have been waiting for for a long time. House Republicans have a long track record of success in helping the tech community, and we are back with an agenda. We're committed to creating an environment where the technology sector can flourish. In working to advance technology policies, we will ensure that the U.S. continues to lead the world in innovation and that the technology sector in America remains a driving force and job-creating engine of our economy. The House Republican Technology Working Group has been tasked by Speaker Boehner to keep House leadership and key committee leaders informed about issues important to the technology community and to encourage policies that will promote the success and competitiveness of the technology community. I serve as chairman of the Technology Working Group and am pleased to announce our three vice chairmen, Representatives Lamar Smith, Kathy McMorris-Rogers, and Michael McCall. Today we present an agenda containing many of the major issues the Technology Working Group will promote this Congress. This agenda expands on the Republican pro-growth jobs plan to focus on technology issues that will fo foster economic growth. Specifically, the Working Group will promote policies to ensure spectrum availability and efficiency, protect the U.S. from cyber attacks, protect American intellectual property, promote free and fair trade, update the tax code and ensure job growth, ensure access and retention of the world's best and brightest workers, and reduce unnecessary red tape and regulation. While this is not an exhaustive list, it will form the core of what the Working Group will focus on this Congress. In a moment, I will turn it over to other members of the Working Group to describe the specific agenda items in greater detail. However, I will first describe one of the agenda items, the protection of intellectual property. America is the most innovative nation on earth, due in part to the strong intellectual property protections our founders included in the Constitution and Congress's commitment to keep those protections strong and current. One of the Technology Working Group's priorities will be working to enact patent reform to modernize our patent laws to meet the challenges of the modern economy, which is much different than it was the last time comprehensive changes to the patent laws were enacted. The House Judiciary Committee has reported out a strong patent bill, and we will work to see it signed into law. We will also work to protect all forms of intellectual property from theft overseas, which undermines the incentives for American inventors, authors, and creators to continue to innovate. And now it is my pleasure uh, to uh, introduce the individual who is our leader and who makes it possible for us to drive this agenda forward for the tech community. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the Speaker of the House, John Boehner. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, Bob, uh, thank you, and uh, thanks for the job that uh, you've done with the, uh, uh, the High Tech Working Group, uh, not just over the last couple of years, but uh, frankly, for as long as you've been in Congress. And I think all of you know that since the moment that we were entrusted with a majority, uh, our focus has been on job creation. And today, I think we take another important step uh, forward with the policy priorities outlined in the Technology Working Group. Uh, the technology sector is a prime source of innovation and job creation in our country. And uh, as in the case of uh, many industries, however, tech companies face significant challenges in the form of excessive government regulations that stifle their poten potential and hurt uh, their competitiveness. A few weeks ago, I had a chance to talk to some employers in Silicon Valley. They're on the front line of our country's efforts uh, to create new jobs, and they're concerned about the policies uh, that are coming out of Washington. Listen, as a former small business owner myself, uh, <coughs> I know what it's like to try and to create jobs, especially in the face of job-crushing regulations coming from Washington. And I think this working group is promoting policies that will help keep America at the forefront of innovation and unleash uh, the drive and entrepreneurship of our people. And I really do want to thank uh, Bob Goodlatte and uh, the members of the High Tech Working Group, uh, some of which are here today, uh, for the great job they're doing on behalf of our conference. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We are very fortunate to have two of the three uh, vice chairmen 
of the working group here. The third, Lamar Smith, is uh, busy with a markup in the Judiciary Committee, and that's why I took the opportunity to talk about the patent bill that he has been uh, aggressively moving forward. But uh, we are fortunate that one of the members of our leadership is also one of the co-chairs uh, of our high-tech working group, and that is the um, vice chairman of the technology working group and the vice chair of our conference, Kathy McMorris-Rogers. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Chairman Goodlatte, for your excellent uh, and important leadership on the issue of technology and innovation. I come from Washington State, proud home of Microsoft, um, Amazon, Nintendo, Expedia, Schweitzer Engineering, iTron, Next IT, and so many more. In fact, the Washington Technology Industry Association is the largest statewide association of technology companies and executives in the world. There's over 162,000 jobs, 7,200 businesses, and approximately 14.6 billion in payroll in Washington State's high-tech industry. And you know, it all starts with a person who has an idea, is able to turn it into a reality, start a business, create jobs, improve our standard of living, and our quality of life. This is the entrepreneurial spirit and the techn technological advancement that has made America great and that will continue to make America great. In order to maintain our competitive innovation, innovative advantage, though, in America, we need a strong foundation from which these ideas can take root. And part of that includes making our educational system the best in the world. America needs to lead in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. A third of our students are not graduating from high school right now. Half of those that do graduate need some kind of remedial math or English. This is not laying a strong foundation. We must bring our schools into the 21st century, ensure that students understand the importance of graduating from high school, and recognize that 80% of the jobs in the next 10 years are going to require some kind of post-high school education, whether it's one year, two years, four years, eight years. In addition to focusing on education reform here in America, we need to fix our visa system to ensure that highly talented, foreign-born students educated in our universities, some of the best universities in the world, can become a part of our workforce. In fact, in many critical <laughs> academic areas, especially in the STEM fields, a significant number of postgraduate degrees are awarded to international students. It speaks very highly of our university system, but it's a problem when they can't stay here in America and work. In fact, foreign-born students receive 40% of U.S. engineering master's degrees, 53% of U.S. engineering PhD uh, degrees. We need to revise our visa system so that highly educated professionals can stay in this country promote U.S. economic growth, and spur job creation here at home. That's why the R's, the Republicans, have put together this innovation agenda to focus on education, visa reform, and so many other issues that are important to promote American innovation and entrepreneurship. I'm thrilled to be a part of the launch of the Technology Working Group, and I'm proud of the plan we devised and the path we're taking to get Americans back to work. Kathy, thank you very much. Another uh, of our vice chair of the technology working group uh, has been uh, keenly focused on the security issues related uh, to the use of this technology and the safety and security of our, uh, our government, uh, our industry sector, and our citizens, uh, and that is uh, Congressman McCall. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thanks uh, for your leadership on this issue and bringing this uh, to the point where we are today. I see so many familiar faces out there, and I just want to say welcome and, and thank you for your support for our efforts. Uh, this is about innovation. It's about uh, being able to compete globally. Uh, it's about job creation here in the United States. Um, there are many issues I could talk about, um, whether it's R&D tax credit, which I know Kevin will talk about, the, the high-skilled workforce that Kathy referred to, uh, repatriation, uh, competes act, uh, but I was asked to talk about cybersecurity uh, here today as the bells go off. I hope we're not voting right now. Uh, <clears throat> uh, <good>. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, being from Austin, like Kathy has a lot of high tech in her district, and of course Austin, I have just about every high tech company you can think of. 
Um, I did take a recent tour at the Silicon Valley as well, uh, right before the speaker went and got to hear from a lot of the um, innovation high-tech leaders in Silicon, uh, which is very helpful. I chair the high-tech caucus and the cybersecurity uh, caucus, so I, I take these issues very seriously. Uh, I think technology is the key to opportunity and job creation here in the United States, and that's the agenda that we're going to drive uh, for this Congress. Uh, the issue of cybersecurity presents great challenges and great threats. It's an issue of national security and economic security. Recently, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Admiral Mike Mullen, called it one of the greatest threats we face today, saying it is lethal and potent. There are adversaries in the cyber world we don't understand yet, he says. And in his words, it's pretty scary stuff. You know, when the, when the chairman of the uh, uh, Joint Chiefs says something like that, I, I, it gets my attention. In, in fact, a cyber attack on the interests of the United States could cause grave damage to our critical infrastructures and economy. And through the click of a mouse, adversaries could bring down our power grids, our financial institutions, fuel supplies, and our air traffic control and communication lines. In fact, anything tied to the internet is vulnerable to an attack from the internet. This type of cyber attack of which I speak could cause greater economic damage than the events of September the 11th. Recently, we heard tes testimony that every federal agency in Washington has been hacked into, including the Pentagon, where large amounts of data have been stolen. Imagine agents of a foreign power stealing paper files out of the Pentagon and getting caught. It would be on the front page of the Washington Post. And yet in the virtual world, this is happening every day, and we don't hear much about that. In fact, the Wall Street Journal reported just today that U.S. officials' email accounts have been hacked into by perpetrators from China. Businesses in the private sector are compromised every day by criminal hackers who steal valuable intellectual property and trade secrets. Last week it was Lockheed. Before that it was Sony. And the list goes on and on. The lost, lost estimates are in the billions of dollars and American jobs are suffering. The threat exists. And we have to be prepared or the American people will rightfully ask, why didn't you do something to stop it? House Republicans are working on a plan to protect our federal networks, to incentivize the private sector, to harden and protect our critical infrastructures, and to come up with a national cybersecurity strategy for the 21st century. Such a plan will protect our national security and our economic security. It will protect and strengthen our businesses and private sector from further economic damage, and it will ultimately create more jobs and prosperity here at home. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. We're also very uh, pleased to be joined by a senior member of the Ways and Means Committee who has been a leader on issues related to trade and taxes and research and development tax credits, and uh, that is uh, uh, Congressman Kevin Brady of Texas. Thank you, Bob. Well, Bob, thank you for your leadership, and if you wouldn't mind skipping uh, the senior part of Ways and Means, I would really appreciate it. I uh, appreciate the leadership, too, of our vice chairs as well. You know, for America's technology industry, the marketplace is a world marketplace. So it's not enough to simply buy American. You have to sell American. And this technology group is committed to opening up markets, finding new customers in every corner of this globe, and then ensuring we have the type of tax code that our industry can compete to win in those markets around the world. Uh, opening markets uh, uh, with uh, supporting and passing the pending free trade agreements, that open up a remarkable new markets, both in our backyard and in the, in the Asia region, will have an, uh, an impressive uh, effect on our economy. We're also going to fight protectionism, uh, tearing down barriers around the world, uh, which uh, restrict uh, our companies from selling and competing uh, in those markets. And we're also going to look at ways we can move uh, products better, faster, cheaper around the world as well, which we've learned from this global downturn has become even more and more important to our industry. Uh, we need to clear the decks by passing the three pending trade agreements uh, this summer. Uh, we need to, uh, to pass expired programs uh, in preferences and trade adjustment assistance as well. And then looking forward, opening new markets through the Trans-Pacific Partnership with strong property rights protections in those 
that agreement as well, uh, looking to Doha as they work through this early harvest, uh, updating the information technology agreement, uh, and also because piracy has become just endemic around the world, ensuring that uh, we are addressing that issue, both the concerns today and as we look at future trade agreements as well. Opening those markets is key. Competing to win is even uh, is equally important. We need a tax code that allows our industry to do just that. Our tax rates are too high. We're falling behind other countries. They're taking a page from our playbook. Low taxes, common sense regulations, skilled workforce, and beating us on the head with it. So I support uh, Chairman Dave Camps and the Speaker's effort to, uh, to lower the corporate tax uh, rates to make us more competitive, uh, to simplify that tax code, uh, and those efforts are moving forward. But as we seek reform, we also need to move forward with the ideas that can grow our economy today. That includes repatriation, uh, lowering that tax, tax gate and allowing up to $1 trillion of stranded U.S. profits to flow back into the U.S. economy, to grow jobs, we invest in R&D, to buy the buildings and software and equipment that will drive jobs along Main Street. And we also need to strengthen our research and development incentives as well. The 1980s, America led the world in these incentives. Today, we rank 24th. These are good-paying jobs that lead not just to innovation, but patents and a continuing source of jobs uh, in the future. Uh, we need to strengthen that R&D tax credit. We need to increase it, uh, and we need to make it permanent. Bottom line today is we're buying the R&D tax credit on installments, and as a result, we're not able to drive that car farther and fast enough to really keep pace with our competitors. So the technology group, I think, can play a key role in opening these markets and uh, ensuring that uh, our American companies can compete to win, and look forward to working with you all to do that. Thanks. Well, Kevin, thank you very much. Uh, we were hoping that uh, uh, Congressman Greg Walden uh, would be able to join us to talk about spectrum, uh, a very important aspect of our tech agenda to deliver uh, the necessary means of uh, uh, communicating and uh, sharing the great technologies that uh, many of the companies represented here today uh, are developing and getting them into businesses and, and homes. Uh, he is in a markup in the Energy and Commerce Committee, and I suspect he won't get here, but if he does in the next few minutes, we'll put him right up. We also have uh, a, a handout for you available at the back of the room, if you haven't already received it, that uh, gives a little more detail uh, to each one of these agenda items. But the most important detail is going to come from you. The House Republican Technology Working Group uh, was established by former Speaker Newt Gingrich many years ago following uh, an effort that I know Ralph Hellman and Bill Bond and others uh, recall very, very well uh, related to encryption and uh, a, a very backward policy that had been carried forward by a number of administrations. We worked in a very bipartisan way to move an agenda forward to change that policy, uh, and ultimately the policy was changed. But as we moved through the process, we found that uh, some of the members of our leadership were getting information from one side of that debate, <coughs> namely the CIA and the NSA and the FBI, and not hearing enough from the tech community about how the old way of looking at the use of, uh, uh, of encryption uh, controlled by government, as opposed to making it available to individuals and businesses, wasn't working. So when we got to the top, we found that uh, we hit a barrier uh, and had difficulty moving forward even further. Uh, this was established by Speaker Gingrich to do two things. One, for us to do what we're doing today, to reach out to you and to say that Republicans get it on technology issues and we have uh, a bold and aggressive agenda that we are going to be pushing forward in this Congress. But secondly, it is your pipeline into the Republican leadership. And I think our current leadership of uh, Speaker John Boehner and Majority Leader Eric Cantor, our Whip Kevin McCarthy, our Conference Chairman Jeb Henserling, uh, our Vice Chairman Kathy McMorris-Rogers and the other members of our leadership uh, are very much attuned to the importance of the tech community uh, and uh, very receptive to ideas. The environment has very much changed uh, over the last 15 years, but uh, we need your ideas, your input uh, on uh, how to flesh out these issues and other issues that we need to put uh, 
uh, up on our agenda as well. So our doors are all open to you to hear from you about those issues. Now I'm going to take the opportunity.